Abia State, conceptualized by its founding fathers as God's own state, was created alongside its contemporaries on August 27, 1991, by the then military government of President Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida with the motto, Unya Halawanea, meaning, Abians should be their brother's keepers. This sacred maxim embodied the philosophy and guiding principle for the running of the affairs of the state, particularly in the area of provision of social amenities and ascension to positions of leadership. The inauguration of Dr. Okezi Victor Ikbe Azu, the first ever governor of Ukwa extraction, on May 29, 2015, was a fulfillment of that sacred maxim and marked the dawn of a new beginning in Abia. A gifted child and prodigy, Dr. Okezi Victor Ikbe Azu attained the rare feat of becoming a PhD holder at the young age of 30. With his sterling academic accomplishments, impeccable character, and wealth of governance experience, Dr. Ikbe Azu has refined and redefined the art of governance in Abia. As a devout elder in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, a conservative Christian denomination, Governor Ikbe Azu's ability to combine piety and politics is one that has stood him out amongst his peers in his over two decades of public service. So, in appreciation of his outstanding performance, Abians overwhelmingly re-elected him in 2019 to consolidate the recorded achievements aimed at transforming the state into an economically vibrant state that satisfies the yearnings and aspirations of its people. The governor, Dr. Okeji Bansu, has represented our party well. Of course, when we went to election, we won because of his performance. The people of Abia saw what he had done and gave him a second term. Back in 2015, Governor Okezi Victor Ikbiazu started by taking deliberate steps to plan for and create a sustainable development model. This he did by putting together a strong think tank made up of foremost Abia reputable economic experts like Dr. Ngozi Okunjo Iweala, Professor Anya O Anya, Miss Aruma Ote and Emeka Onka, amongst others. This was followed by the setting up of an economic team that critically appraised the economic potential of the state and fine-tuned them to take advantage of all available prospects. I haven't met a governor with a clear vision of where he wants to go as Dr. Kizir. I have also not met a governor who articulates his position well as Dr. Okeze. 
I also have met a, a governor who is quite friendly to uh, investor uh, participation in the economic growth of our country, of our state, as Dr. Okese. Today, under Governor Okezie Victor Ikbe Azu, Abia is looking inwards in the areas it has comparative advantage, and this has led to the massive rejuvenation and achievements that is now being celebrated in all sectors of the economy. To Governor Ikbe Azu, security of lives and property as well as the welfare of Abians in all ramifications remains the primary responsibility. From the onset, he started investing massively in strengthening the Abia security architecture through the procurement of hundreds of operational vehicles fitted with modern communication gadgets, consistent provision of necessary logistic incentives, Construction of new Zone 9 Police Headquarters in Umwahia. Construction of internal roads at Aba Area Command Police Headquarters. Building of official residence for security chiefs of the various security agencies in the state, thereby successfully repositioning them to meet the demands of the time. Governor Ikbe Azu also established the Ministry of Homeland Security with over 500 trained officers from the 17 local governments. He launched the Crime Prevention and Management System, CPAMS, constructed and commissioned a command center for his innovative Abia Safety Alert System, ABSAS, inaugurated the Abia State Police Advisory Committee, created the Traffic and Indiscipline Management Agency of Abia State, TMAS, and organized the recent security sensitization workshop that covered the entire local government councils of Abia State. It is on record that since Governor Ikbe Azu came on board, armed robbery, kidnapping, and other violent crimes have been reduced to the barest minimum with unprecedented peace and political stability in the land. Gladly, these proactive measures have contributed to a large extent in making Abia one of the safest states in the Federation today. Unarguably, of all the infrastructural facilities, good road networks constitute the main driver of socio-economic growth and development. In a gigantic move suitably designated as Caterpillar Revolution, Governor Ikbe Azu took on this challenge headlong, enlisting the cooperation of strategic institutions like New Map, World Bank, and other development institutions within and outside Nigeria. His decision to embark on aggressive construction of link roads to major economic zones in Abia State is meant to drive trade and commerce, which are the main fulcrum of the state's economy. While prioritizing urban infrastructural development, he also ensured the deployment of resources towards the realization of a number of critical arterial rural roads. It is instructive that the first official function of Governor Okezie Ikbe Azu, barely 72 hours after his inauguration six years ago, was the flag off of several strategic road projects in Aba, the commercial nerve center of Abia State. This was the beginning of the regeneration and reclamation of that strategic city. As at today, Governor Ikbe Azu has successfully completed and commissioned over a hundred roads across Abia State. These include Aba Road, Umwahia, with massive culverts. This present administration came on board 2015. They started the construction work something like August 2015, and uh, since August 2015, the Roadwork have been on. 
and uh, by the grace of God they just finished it and uh, it is better now. Omoda, Amafo, Isingo, Ring Road with massive erosion remediation. Umwakun Sulu Ring Road and Erosion Remediation. Umwago Isingo Erosion Control. After the uh, governor won the case on a Friday, the following Monday he was here around 10 o'clock and said, no, this house will not go. Before long, contractors arrived and saved the house from just immediate uh, collapse. Okay. One thing for sure is that they are giving us the assurance of their support okay. and their design is uh, very well done. They are guiding us, they are supervising the project perfectly. We've not had any issues whatsoever. Okay. So we have been able to uh, move according to plan. All our works have been completed according to schedule. I never expected that this type of gesture will be expected to me. Who am I? My husband is not around. I'm nobody. I'm, I am nobody. And from nowhere, help came without soliciting for it. So I'm happy. Amafo, Osa Ibeku Road with erosion remediation. It fell by a flood control by Araria Market, Aba. Ukaegbu Estate Road, Umwahia, Brass Street, Aba, Obikabia Road. Chief Sam Mbakwe Road, formerly called Folks Road, thus breaking the genes of the perennial intractable Ama Ikone Pond. Milverton Road, Ezuku Road, Osusu Road. Ojike Lane, Abriba Mboro Road, Abriba Ring Road. Okigwe Road, Aba. Phase 2, Ezuku Road. Ururuka Road. Governor Okezie Ikbe Azu has also delivered four bridges at Okun Aku Bridge, Ohafia, Okobo Bridge, Ndi Oji, Ndi Okiriki Abam, Arachuku Road, Imo, Ndi Ikba, Eziama, Neato Bridge. Other roads include Chima Mwafo, Umojima Road, Umwene Obikabia Road, Umwene Umwika Road, Ehere Road, Ebema Street, Ochefu Road, Ovom Street, Kamalu Road, MCC Road, Oweri Road, Egege Ama Ohofia Street, 
Park Road, Omni Street, Immaculate Road, Umuacham Road, Umuatako Road, Eastern Nigeria Road, Osisioma, Udagbala Road, Samek Road, Adazi Street, Oyebuchi Street, Off Ngwa Road, Aharando Street, East Street Aba, George's Street Aba, St. Michael's Road Aba, Ukegbu Estate Road Aba, Emilogo Road, Eze Io Kanu Afara Street, Niger Road Umwahia, Kaduna Street Umwahia, Ubakala Street Umwahia, Umuwaya Road Umwahia, Afara Bypass Umwahia, Abam Street Umwahia, Umwehi Legbo Road Isialangwa South, Uwerinta Egbule Mbutu Bypass, Omoba Umwene Road. Umochela Road with a spore to Obingwa. Asa Umunka, Ugunagbo Road to Obohia Junction. Umwala Nsulu Mbausi Road. Umunochi Road. Eke Eziama Obulo Road, Umunochi. Umojima Umode Ring Road. Umokiri Road. Mbausi Umwezuku Ikputsu Ururuka Road. Reconstruction and massive expansion of Omoma Road ongoing. Okbu Umoba Mboko Obingwa Road ongoing. Flood control at the Ndiegoro watershed ongoing. The area of roads linked to agricultural centers, transversing several local government areas completed by Dr. Okezie Ikpe Azu in the rural areas abound. A few examples include the Umuika Omoba Road in Isialangwa South Local Government Area, the Osukwa Aro Umweje. Umoba Road, which transverses Osisioma and Isialangwa South Local Government Areas, the Umwene Obikabia Road, and the Umwebe Umu Kirele Ntiga Uzo Ibeme Ring Road in Obingwa Local Government Area. There is also the Umwaro Ekweria Zongwa Nto Edino Road a bypass that provides alternative access for the teeming traders coming from Akwaibom to Aba Daily. Another stride that will indeed stand the test of time is his current intervention on Aba Ikot Ekbene Road, which is very strategic to the economy of Abia State. This road links Aba to Akwaibom State and Cross River States, extending to neighboring Cameroon and Central African Republic. Largely, agrarian communities like Alauji, Umwafuku, Ohanze, Umuokbu, and Onichangwa are located on the fringes of this very important road. Gladly, construction work has advanced along the Obohia Road, Ungwa Road, Ohanku Road axis, with a bridge linking Ngwa Road and Ogbohio. Interestingly, Governor Ikbe Azu, who pioneered the rigid cement pavements technology, is also known for insisting that dual drainages and culverts be incorporated in all the roads he is constructing to ensure that they are in tandem with international best practices. Indeed, Dr. Okezie Victor has bequeathed to the state its first ever underpass at the Osisioma interchange, which is now in the final stage of completion. Okay, is it by the PhD? He's the man who is so articulate. He knows what he's doing at any particular time. And he came to correct all the anomalies that has been happening in governance in Abia State. And he's achieving from what we have seen in the past uh, six years, you know, he has governed up their state. For instance, you can see the road, you know, he's doing in Aba. 
Abba was completely gone as far as Rose is concerned there. But go there now, you see what has happened. Drive around Abba now. You can you can you can enter into major roads and come out from the from the uh, Fidel. Governor Ikbe Azu has surpassed all expectations and projections in the area of trade, investment, industries, and SME's development. He began by mounting a massive sensitization of the citizenry on the needs to engage in small and medium-scale enterprises, promotion of locally made products, modernization of production processes in cottage industries across Abia State and ensuring that there is improvement on the quality of products that meet international standards. Through personal example, he led an unprecedented rebranding campaign for Made in Abba products and took Abba to the global market square. Through active collaboration with the Abba Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, ASIMA, and other established institutions within and outside Nigeria, Governor Okezie Ikpeazu mobilized Abians everywhere to embrace the limitless possibilities inherent in their God-given creativity, leading to a success story that is now the subject of admiration and source of inspiration for national and global organizations. Afterwards, Governor Ikbeazu embarked on the human capital development of the city by exposing the artisans in Abba to international know-how, which saw scores of them sponsored to China Turkey, and Brazil to sharpen their skills. The good news is that the ultra-modern machines which they trained with abroad have been brought down and installed in Abba and the products being produced by the Aimba Automated Shoe Company and NASCO, established by the visionary governor, is now competing comfortably with goods made in Asia and Europe. I'm, I'm happy with what the governor Ibazi is doing. He took, took a lot of Abians and entrepreneurs to China. He exposed them to shoemaking and fashion designs. And they're back. I think they are doing uh, marvelously, marvelously well in Abba. And he's setting up a big shoe factory, which is uh, very soon will be exporting shoes to neighboring West African countries. Dr. Ikbi Azu is already consolidating on the successes recorded in the Made in Aba campaign by taking measures to institutionalize the rapid industrialization going on in Aba and other parts of the state through the establishment of other ultra-modern Abashu industry clusters. The ongoing establishment of Aimba Economic City to create a global business hub that connects the nine southeast and south south states. The establishment of the Umu Kalika Leather and Garment Cluster. The establishment of the Ovom Agro Industrial Cluster. The establishment of Umwaya Agro Industrial Cluster the establishment of technology hubs, among others. Governor Ikbe Azu is using these cluster models to remove notable constraints associated with MSMEs and increase their access to finance, technology, and infrastructural facilities. Already, the Nigerian Railway Corporation, Nigerian Army, and several other national institutions are now ordering massive numbers of quality made in Abba shoes for their personnel. Governor Ikbe Azu has launched the Abia State Long-Term Development Plan, encapsulating this momentous vision and paving the way for a measurable, sustainable model that will serve not just his government, but also the future generation of Abians. Governor Okezie Victor Ikbe Azu's epoch will long be celebrated as the era that saw Abia coming third, next only to Abuja and Lagos 
in the attraction of foreign direct investment and unprecedented influx of economic opportunities. Working with the state governor, Dr. Okezi Bazo, PhD, had been an interesting journey. Whenever anything comes to Nigeria, you will see that the first place it comes to is either Lagos. After Lagos takes, Abuja takes, the next place we will take now is Abia. Policies and programs that led to the achievement of this great feat were incubated and harnessed right from the first year of the Ikbe Azuled government. He carefully took steps aimed at limiting government direct participation in economic activities in favor of increased private sector involvement by creating the Private Public Investment Promotion Council of Abia State, with the government providing necessary incentives and support services to facilitate the growth of the economy as well as the establishment of the Abia micro and medium enterprises msme bank dr ikbe azu developed a blueprint that strengthened government machinery and agencies involved in support service delivery to small and medium skill enterprises sme this he did by embarking on capacity building of major institutions and a vast number of abia youths involved in micro come small enterprises and industrialization. Today, under Governor Ikbe Azu, the Golden Guinea Breweries has been rejuvenated and the Inner Galaxy Company is producing at optimal capacity. The pursuit of infrastructural revival, revitalization of industries and strengthening of the state economic and productive base is expected to bring the desired change and orientation that is consistent with the demands of the technology-driven 21st century. The target is essentially to create an economy that will be less dependent on oil revenue and more in tandem with global best practices while assimilating the ever-increasing army of restive young people through employment generation. Governor Okezie Victor Ikbe Azu has redefined the concept of youth empowerment through various innovative strategies. This he has demonstrated through programs and appointments such as the Education for Employment E4E Scheme that aims at training youths on how to acquire several skills. The Abia Youth for Agriculture Scheme. The Aimba Automated Shoe Company and NASCO. The Direct Employment of Youths via TMAS, ABSA, APUMA. The Abia State Marketing and Quality Management Agency. The Multi-Skill Entrepreneurship Development Center. The Abia Digital Taxi Scheme. The Aimba Economic City Project. All these strategic interventions have created thousands of jobs and led to the reduction of crime and youth restiveness in Abia State. Governor Okezie Victor has embarked on economic diplomacy in some part of the world in order to create the needed synergies that will get direct foreign investment into the state. The extensive shuttle diplomacy he embarked upon during the early years of his administration has yielded fruits today as there has been remarkable inflow of foreign direct investment into the state. The Abia delegation to the African Development Bank, personally led by the indefatigable governor Ikbe Azu, during which he impressed upon the bank and other international finance institutions and indeed investors to come to Abia and explore the state's numerous economic potential has paid off as the ADB is one of the major stakeholders in the ongoing AIMBA Economic City Project. In April 2017, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbanjo commended the quality of Abamade goods and described Abia State as the SME capital of Nigeria. 
A consortium of investors have already started the process of building a world-class seaport in the Ukwa axis of Abia State. Their choice of Aba goes to show the success story of Governor Ikbe Azu's policy of encouraging local and foreign investments. Under his watch, the Ministry of Trade and Investment has equally developed an electronic register of traders and businesses that is now actively linking the hitherto unknown local traders to investors from various economic centers across the world. Several ambassadors of various countries are now embarking on exploratory tours of Abia State in search of opportunities for their entrepreneurs back home. I will describe the performance of Dr. Okeze Ipazo in these six years as excellent. He has done well in every human endeavor, call it in education, in health, in science and technology, in infrastructural development, and above all, in skill acquisition and enterprises which our people have been known for and trade and commerce. And when it comes to interpersonal relationship, he has done very well with the party, with the other arms of government like the judiciary and the House of Assembly. And above all, he has managed the state so well that there is peace everywhere, that all aspects of our people, be it women, the youth, there is calm, there is you know, a good atmosphere. And these things can only be done when you know where you're going to. It's a man of vision. And uh, for us in the party, we are very proud of you. Agriculture is the mainstay of the livelihood of the majority of Abia rural and semi-urban centers. Like Michael Okbara, Governor Okezie Victor Ikpeazu has instituted one of the most enduring agriculture policies anywhere in the world. His annual distribution of the latest internationally modified seedlings of various crops to farmers speaks to his determination to make Abia State take its rightful place as one of the most important agricultural centers of Nigeria. A 150,000 bird capacity poultry cluster is now functional at Umosu Nsulu Isialangwa local government area, even as Dr. Ikbe Azu's administration has pioneered large scale mushroom production and established five cottage rice meals at Bende, Ofeme, Uzoakoli, Acha, and Atani Abam. More than 4 million Tenera palm seedling, as at the last count, have been planted across the state. Several hectares of cassava farm has been cultivated in the last six years. Also, a new cashew plantation in Umunneochi, amongst others, are now some of the innovative interventions of Dr. Okezie Ikpeazu that are now yielding unquantifiable dividends for Abians. One area where Dr. Okezie Victor Ikpeazu has distinguished himself as a leader with vision is the educational sector. No fewer than 580 classroom blocks have been constructed all over the state together with modern toilet facilities, water boreholes, and administrative blocks. Dr. Ikbiazu has also established four model schools at Ohofia, Osa, Abai, and Obingwa, spread across the three senatorial zones of the state. We have four model schools, one in Obingwa, one at Osisioma, uh, one at Omaha, one at Ohofia. These model schools are going to be good examples of an ideal public school. For three consecutive years, Abia State, under the education-friendly governor, Ikbeazu, has maintained the first position in the West African Senior Certificate Examination, WASSCE. Conscious of the liberating quality of education, 
his administration has retrained Abia teachers using local and international education providers, improved on public school enrollment from 142,000 in 2015 to over 800,000 as at November 2020, provided COVID-19 personal protection equipment for all schools in Abia. Expanded the school feeding program of the federal government to include all classes till junior secondary school and improved the rating of Abia State University and ASETA via aggressive infrastructural revolution that has led to accreditation of so many new programs. The person has done very, very, very well. What the others were unable to do, they were able to do them uh, with careful planning, design, and others. After reviewing what I've done in the past, the roads, infrastructure, and so many other things, investment in education, investment in human development, and others, you know, it's the type of person we need to lead people of this state. In the health sector, there is introduction of geriatric care in Abia State. We are here for a program, the Tender Loving Care Home Care Services, designed by our amiable and health-loving governor. He designed it solely for the aged from 78 and above. Courtesy of our governor, Dr. Okezi Pazu, we are here today in Isi Alangba South, and all along they've been talking to nurses from Isi Alangba South. There's a particular reason for that, because of the culture, because of the people. Once they come in and start talking to the old man and the old lady or our elderly ones in their own language, they start to respond, they open up. As we live here now, we go for a conference. We'll sit down and divide all the patients into the caregivers so that we'll be seeing them based on the plan. We'll have what we call a plan of care. Based on that plan, we'll decide if we're going to be seeing him twice a week, once a week, once a month, it just depends on his own disease process. So once we sit down and analyze all of that, we'll make that decision. Then he will see us coming. The Abia Telehealth Care Initiative. This is a very nice initiative that helps me and the patients. Anywhere you are, as long as you had access to a pin, you could credit your phone. It's very simple. It's a three-step instruction at the back, scratch the panel, it gives you a 10 digit pin and it tells you to enter in, in the pin into the phone and when you do that it automatically opens an electronic case note for you such that whenever you are making that same call from that same phone you don't have to re-enter your pin, it's already um, locked you in. You can just by simply using this card either from a primary health care centre or from the comfort of your home be able to be put on straight to a doctor and then have quality consultation and then of course quality outcomes. Today, what we have come to launch is what I call a dream come true. We can link up all the 292 primary health care centers to a call center manned by medical doctors so that people can have access to medical doctors at the dial of a button. I'm told that citizens can now, through a dedicated telephone line and affordable prepaid cards, access medical care and support from a statewide network of doctors who will be able to communicate even in local languages. We have listened to Dr. Omas, who has spoken to us extensively about the uses of this, and we have seen it actually being demonstrated. We have seen a person who actually called the telehealth center and was attended to by a doctor. This is a very commendable initiative indeed. Revival of the Moribond Abad General Hospital. <laughs> the construction of a brand new general hospital at Obingwa, Ikuano, and Arachuku. The introduction of the emergency medical services, which saw to the acquisition of state-of-the-art ambulances and daily deployment of health teams to key points across the state. 
All of these constitute an incontrovertible evidence of the revolution in the health sector. His exceptional management of the COVID-19 crisis through proactive provision of testing laboratories, treatment cum isolation centers, and aggressive enlightenment campaigns helped to check the spread of the pandemic in Abia State. Sanchez in Abia State express our gratitude to the government of Abia State for this wonderful and surprising package to Abia State community because of the coronavirus effect on the people. We want to say may God bless you, may God bless the government of Abia State. We want to promise you, as you have told us, that this gift is for the indigenous fellows in our community. We shall use this gift for that purpose. And at the end of the day, the people will be happy and the name of our God shall be glorified. Once more, we want to say thank you and may God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On behalf of Muslim community at their states, we thank you so very much for this wonderful gift given to the Muslim woman. Uh, since this thing started, we have not seen it happen this big. Therefore, we thank you and uh, promise you that uh, by the special grace of Almighty Allah, this gift will reach the downtrodden. The governor has excelled in the area of sports as well. Abia State is home to the Aimba Football Club and Abia Warriors Football Club, both doing well in the National Premier League. Specifically, under Governor Okezie Ikbeazu, the Abbas Stadium has been upgraded to an international standard and has been approved by CAF for Aimba Football Club CAF matches. This is in addition to the promotion of other sporting events that has brought laurels to the state. The wife of the governor, Okezie Victor Ikbeazu, Deaconess Nkechi Ikbeazu, is playing a wonderful complementary role to drive home the visions of her husband in the area of job creation for women, entrepreneurship development, and poverty alleviation. Also, through her NGO, the Vicar Hope Foundation, she has ably initiated programs for women development. These include the empowerment of graduates of her Women Entrepreneurial Skill Acquisition Program, procurement of equipment and takeoff capital to boost self-employment, construction of buildings for indigent widows and families, and organization of programs to complement the free home Medicare delivery system of the governor. I would say that Vika Ho Foundation is an avenue for my husband and myself to reach out to the people, touching lives and helping the less privileged. Every project of the foundation enjoys the support of my husband. And in fact, a lot of the ideas and initiatives come from him. Her exceptional efforts in combating the scourge of cancer and sickle cell anemia through unrelenting awareness creation campaigns and provision of drugs and free treatments to sickle cell patients are unprecedented. <laughs> Expectant mothers and elderly women are not left out in the comprehensive maternal and child care initiative of Deaconess Nkechi Ikbeazu, who regularly gives them maternity packs and gift items to cushion the effect of the dwindling economy on the rural women.
since his assumption of office, Dr. Okezie Victor Ikpe Azu has established himself as a pivot for the actualization of a just and prosperous Abia. His devotion to the establishment of an egalitarian society based on equity and fairness and commitment to purposeful, progressive leadership no doubt stands him out as the father of Abia Renaissance. Despite political vicissitudes and initial attempts to distract him through the courts, Dr. Okezie Victor Ikbeazu has been undaunted, unshaken, and absolutely focused. He has never wavered in the cause of the divine mandate God ordained him for, which is to give his utmost to steer the sheep of the Abia enterprise away from the precipice. He is a political leader whose humility, accessibility, versatility and productivity has defied all negative permutations. His unique grasp of developmental dynamics as well as people-oriented disposition is an inestimable asset in the movement of Abia Renewal. His exemplary life, astuteness and impeccable character, determination, hard work and a good sense of history confirms that he is, indeed, a man destined for greatness. Governor Okezie Victor Ikbe Azu is acknowledged as a friend of everybody in distress. His extraordinary compassion and genuine love for the suffering masses has elevated the humanitarian work beyond the mere offering of material soccer. It is therefore not surprising that Governor Ikbe Azu's sterling performance earned him many accolades and awards from reputable institutions, media houses, and independent organizations, home and abroad, some of which includes Vanguard Governor of the Year Award, Business Day Good Governance Award as Most Improved State in Education and Promotion of SME Development, Daily Times Award for Best Performance, MSME National Merit Awards, DA AIT Communication Award of Excellence, Award of Excellence by Abia Indigens in Diaspora, the Nigeria Professional League Sports Secretary's Award, amongst others. The governor has done exceptionally well, and um, that is why this independent organization is giving him this award. This is not an award by the PDP. It's not an award by the Ufangwa people. It's not an award of any local government. It's an independent award by a newspaper that has a first-rate publisher. You know, so we're all grateful to God. Moving forward, while congratulating the great and wonderful people of Abia on the attainment of this amazing milestone of his anniversary, Dr. Okezie Victor Ikbeazu, who has successfully piloted the affairs of the state in the last six years, have this message of hope. I want to start by saying that um, six years down the line, um, we have spent time effort and rigor to see how best we can deploy the resources available to us as Ndabia for the overall development, not only of our state, but uh, the economy of this region and indeed Nigeria. And we think that going forward, Abia will continue to rely on the ability and capacities of our people as the best traders as uh, the best hands in terms of small and medium scale enterprises. Um, we have done quite a lot to dredge up and create a platform that will enable every Abian to participate um, in the development and governance of this state and to be part of the growth of our dear state going forward. We want to continue to ask that we leverage on our ability to uh, trade and our ability to participate in small and light manufacturing. We believe that Abia State will continue to play a leading role as the hope of this country when it comes to playing um, in the African 
trade, free trade agreement. I also believe that Abia State has a role to play when it comes to promotion of trade and commerce within the 21st century. We are going to continue to work hard to educate our people such that they will be the best farmers we can think of. Abia has the, one of the smallest land areas in Nigeria, but we think that God has prepared us to go into value addition of agricultural products. And in doing so, we must be prepared to educate ourselves, to participate in modern day uh, agricultural practices. Uh, we also have to trade our train our people and educate our people to be strong when it comes to digital economy. We must be able to participate in e-commerce. We must be able to also uh, imbibe new ways of manufacturing the things we are known for, especially when it comes to leather, bags, when it comes to shoes, when it comes to garments. We must be able to uh, deploy science and technology so that we can uh, produce more at the cheapest rate available at the top quality. Uh, on this note, I want to say that um, Abia State will continue to remain relevant, not only in the economy within the Southeast, but in Nigeria and indeed Africa. We are prepared to compete with China, we are prepared to compete with uh, the big economies of this world because we have the people and our greatest asset will remain the people of Abia State. Let Ndi Abia and residents sustain their support for and cooperation with Governor Okezie Ikbeazu, whose giant strides so far are indicative of his resolve and commitment to leave enduring footprints for all Abians and posterity. <laughs>